Hi, it's Brian from NSLive.TV, and welcome to Seeing People, the first episode. Now, for those of you who know me, I spend a lot of time seeking out talented people online, and one person who's caught my attention is a very talented artist who not only can do amazing things on canvas, but she can also produce some extremely detailed art by painting on feathers. Well, today, I've managed to track her down to the Bike and Bean, a popular coffee shop here in Tantalon, where her latest series of paintings, The Lobster Ladies, are on display. Let's go on inside and see if we can find Cynthia Henry, artist extraordinaire. It's really nice to connect with you finally after connecting on uh, on social media. But I, yeah. I really have to ask you the question: yeah. How long have you been painting? Oh my dear! Um, I did a few paintings while my mother was still alive, but it was actually uh, uh, she asked me to paint um, before she left this world, and it was a promise that I made to her the day she got a cancer. And uh, about a month later, I, uh, part of my grieving process, I guess, I went into her studio and started going through her paintbrushes and um, got through a few tears and, and then started to paint. And that was uh, in August of 2001. First couple paintings were really bad. <laughs> I thought, There's always a learning oh. curve to something, right? <laughs> I said, well, Mom, this looks so easy when you were doing it. But uh, yeah, then I started um, learning the technique and learning to be patient with the brush, you know, letting the brush do the work and uh, letting the water sort of do its thing on the paper. And that was with watercolor that I first started to paint with. So. It's great to know I've got a paint knife that's coming up. So uh, here, I'm getting tips from the expert. Okay, I do walls as well. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> so uh, what is your inspiration for painting these women in this way? Well, <laughs> uh, actually it came from a couple of conversations I had a couple summers ago. Sarah Irwin is a well-known uh, artist down the road there and we were talking about the color red and she said you know if you paint a red buoy or a red boat or something red in your painting you're sure to attract a buyer and uh, I said I totally agree with that because in the world of advertising red is a stopper so it's, as long as you put a red headline on your work or or something red you, you can attract the people so I was thinking afterwards I said well I don't want to do buoys and boats <laughs> I said I'm not very good with those but there's so many people doing it beautifully and I said what could I do that's different and uh, I came up with the lobsters and um, I said okay now how can I paint lobsters beautifully <laughs> So this is actually the third in a series of paintings. Can you tell us about the other two? I, uh, when I first started, I had uh, decided to dedicate my first show to my mother. She painted beautiful flowers and roses and birds. And uh, the concept that I came up with, of course, was I called it Scent of a Woman. And I had uh, the shapes of women going into flowers. And so basically their arms were literally the stems to the flowers and the, and the flowers were up top. And I did 63 watercolors. 63, wow. 63. And How long did that take? I, well, actually, I think it's safe to say about six months to, uh, to come up with that and, and to come up with 63 sexy looking, <laughs> you know, lady shapes. But uh, it was really a delight to work on that and I dedicated that show to my mother. And uh, two years later, I dedicated the next show to my father. <clears throat> and that was a, a show called Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. It's um, nautical sayings using women and ships. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yes, and some of them were naughty. <laughs> if you can <laughs> picture how many nautical sayings are out there. Uh, broad in the beam, sorry. Uh -huh. Broad in the beam. <laughs> Well, it's a not too polite term to define a, a woman's hips these days, but in the uh, in the sense of the ships and the tall ships, it meant that the ship had a broad berth, and um, many of those sayings just screamed femininity because uh, in the navy, of course, they call the women a she, and uh, sorry, they call the ships a she, and uh, and so I saw that parallel between women again and uh, using ships and, and couldn't resist. Again, hauling in some beautiful women to uh, to sell that story, or just sorry, to show that story. Nice. So, yeah. 
I am no art expert by any means, but when I look at these, I definitely get a retro vibe from them. Is that something you intended to, for them to portray? Well, nice question to ask there because definitely it's a retro look. Yeah. Um, I found that the idea of speaking about dining with a lobster, that the language that you use in, in eating a lobster, it kind of brings up kind of feminine images. I mean, you start with the legs. Um, I buy a lobster from the fisherman, I always ask for a female, and I always ask for a female, and the roe being the caviar of the lobster, but uh, I'll say, is she full? Meaning, is she full of meat, and you know, get a good meal out of that. Uh, at the end of the meal, if you're too full to eat it, you often summon the uh, the friends with, who wants my body? <laughs> and then, of course, Done that. Oh, many times, <laughs> many times. And so those kind of terminology, including fresh lobster, I mean, it's so fresh, it's so feminine. And um, and I guess I wanted to bring in together the, uh, the idea that it's a beautiful... Um, connection that we have. Uh, the retro women, of course, glean from ads from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They're a little campish, you know, too, because of my love of advertising. I have collected ads all throughout my life. I have sections of the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, and I just love, especially in the 50s, the beautiful women with their gowns on and gloves, and they're sashaying through their dining rooms, vacuuming <laughs> with that happy image of the Hoover yeah. back room, and I think, oh, my dear, who, who's happy when they vacuum? <laughs> Certainly not me, but the look of those women um, is certainly what I wanted to use in this uh, in this series and then yeah, have fun with them so I created the images and uh, dressed the ladies up with of course lobster boas and uh, lemon <laughs> attributes um, having a little fun with the uh, lobster lips on uh, Marilyn Monroe and uh, yeah just uh, and using the iconic images that we're so used to seeing and combining those with the with the words with the lobster so I, I enjoy the use of headlines so with the ads and bringing the beautiful women into play I guess for me I'm, I just love the empowerment that women have in advertising if we could just run the ad agencies we you know win it all but uh, but women have such uh, gracious looks and, and their beauty alone is is just what people are attracted to in advertising. So when I did my ladies, I thought, well, I'd love to bring in that idea of putting headlines into the paintings. And very few people do that, of course. In fine yeah. art, you just do the painting. But I needed to tell that story. You know, pinch me, I must be dreaming, the pincher claw, you know, um, sayings that are so uh, key to the Nova Scotia art scene here, or sorry, the lobster scene fresh lobster and this poor guy hanging on her feet, you know, I mean, it's, to be able to put those headlines on instead of just the tag underneath the art, I wanted, I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to see right up what the, uh, what, where my thinking is. And I guess that's why I needed to put the headlines on the ads. And yeah, I called them ads. They're not even paintings. <laughs> They're ads. <laughs> yeah. So where can people find your work? Can they buy it? Is it, a, where is it available to them? I have, uh, a number of my pieces hanging throughout the province. I've um, painted on feathers, so I have those down at the Flight of Fancy Gallery in Bear River. And uh, there's a beautiful gallery in um, Annapolis Royal, too, actually. And uh, one is called Trips, and the other is Mojo's. And they're uh, beautiful galleries that feature some of my work. And um, of course, it's what I love most about places like this is that people come in off the street here to cafes where they're uh, casually uh, encountering their friends and this is the kind of environment I really like to be in as well. So uh, um, of course, yes, all my work is for sale. A girl's got to eat and uh, yes. she really has to afford her lobster. Yeah. So, you know, right. come on and buy the artwork. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in today and being on the show and uh, taking the time to talk with us. We greatly appreciate it. And maybe you can find a place where Cynthia Henry's uh, artwork is hanging and you can check it out yourself. Check out the gallery she mentioned. That'd be wonderful. This is Brian from NSLive.TV saying, we're just seeing people. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Wow, Cynthia is an amazingly talented artist, and it was an inspiration to talk with her. Maybe I'll do a little better on my paint night now, who knows? <laughs> Hopefully you'll have a chance to drop into the bike and bean and see her artwork for yourself. Or you can connect with Cynthia on Facebook. I'm sure she'll answer any questions that you might have that I didn't ask. Well, that's the end of the first episode of Seeing People. 
Stay tuned to NSLive.tv as we bring you more talented Nova Scotians. Thanks for watching and remember to like and share this video. I'm really hungry for the lobster now. I think there's a little place down the road. I'm going to check it out.